Hi, welcome to First Pour Wine. I'm Nick. And I'm Greg. And this is our episode about spring. Episode 4. If you're counting. Um, I am counting. On this week, we're going to be featuring uh, two wines. Uh, we got a white from New York, and we have a claret from Bordeaux, France. And um, we have a white wine from New York State. The Empire State. Before we get to that, um, we want to thank everyone who's been watching. Uh, and yes, especially everyone. everyone. I can't believe that people are actually watching this, but all the more power to you. Um, and definitely thank you to our subscribers, and thank you to the people following us on Twitter, and the people who've come to visit the site. Uh, it all means a lot to us, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Um, so great, let's talk about both wines. Alright, first we're going to start off with this lovely white wine from Bully Hill Vineyards. That's one of my favorite names of a vineyard ever. Plus there's a picture of a goat. Do you see the goat? Do you see the goat, everyone? It's not a very cute goat, but it's a goat. Um, this is their goat white. It's um, the Bully Hill. They're located in the Finger Lakes region of New York. Um, apparently this is a big deal of a wine because... I guess the one of the grapes they use is banned in Europe, which is kind of cool, I guess. But yeah, so that's the first one. All right, and for our rosé, because in the summer everybody kind of wants something a little bit uh, tamer, not so thick and heavy, we've got uh, Chateau saint Sulpice's uh, Syrah. This is a Bordeaux claret. Claret. Um, my claret. French is terrible. This one's from 2009. You can kind of see the color on this is a little bit, uh, kind of like, well, blood. Um, which kind of is a, a bit of an English thing, where they would talk a bit about how they might break someone's nose, and they would call your nose a cleric, so to make the cleric flow. Ah! That's why we're not in theater. Anyways, this. this. Um, well, I don't know who's going first. Well, let's try the one first. Okay. Alrighty. Start with this, thing. this week, Greg is going to finally open a bottle of wine in a pretty easy go. Um, he's brought his own opener this time. Uh, this one's from Basic Goods. And I'm not sure how this works, so it's going to be entertaining to watch. Yeah, totally missed. I did totally miss. I think it but see, I'm not going to screw this up this week. I don't think. We're hoping. I'll probably manage, but, you know. With my luck, I'll, I'll figure out a way to screw it up. But. Okay, folks, this is the big moment. Oh, oh I can't do it. Oh! Ah! Huh, I would have never gotten that that's how that works <laughs> based on looking at it. See, that was ridiculously easy. Alright, give me a little pour. Wine with hope. That's the motto for the day. Wine with hope. Or at least it's the last thing Greg's seen on the Bully Hill cork. Is that good? Way too much, but yes. Basically, when you're pouring a tasting, you want to pour a tasting portion, which is generally about, we'll put this back in. about an ounce. Uh... <laughs> I'll put it back in. Anyways, um... So, Bully Hill, as Greg was saying before, they're located in the Finger Lakes. Um, and the reason it's kind of a big deal is what we're talking about is there's two varietals in this. Um, it's uh, Sale Blanc and uh, Vidal Blanc. And these two are French American hybrid grapes that came around um, before European vines, uh, Riesling, Merlot, uh, basically the big name wines got over here today. Um, they do well in cold climates. Um, yeah, we don't have any napkins. Um, yeah. So let's take a little look at this. I'm not sure exactly what the color is supposed to be, but this has a nice kind of um, kind of gold. I was gonna say it's a little bit darker than some of the other stuff that we've tried. Yeah. But it kind of reminds me of. It looks like a riesling. A little bit. I think it should. This is gonna be a medium sweet wine. Um, so this will be well. Uh, this will be well served chilled outside in summer. So let's. Um, the the color's clear, which is the important part really in this case. Let's get a smell. Woo! That's different. I'm getting a bunch of... What are you getting? What are you getting? I'm getting a bunch of pineapple and, 
Like cantaloupe? I, yeah, I'm getting some cantaloupe. I was going to say something melony. Maybe a little honeydew. Get lemon. I don't know if I get like, a, maybe like a, a lemon zest, but not really a yeah. hard lemon. Because it's not sweet or sour like lemon. It's just, like, it's like a bitter lemon. It's, it's citrus of some sort. Well, let's give it a chase and see how it comes out. That's the important thing. A lot of acid in there. You tell it already. That's good. A lot sweeter than it smells. Yes, it, it. There's there's still a lot of acid in that, but I get like peach and cantaloupe and get the, yeah and a little bit of pineapple. I think I might get a little bit of papaya, too. Yeah, a little, it's a lot of tropical fruits in there, which is something that I wouldn't really expect out of a New York wine, because we're talking about New York. I mean, it's cold. It snows here all the time, um, well, except in the summer, but even then you're worried. Um, but it's it's an interesting... Good. Yeah, it's sweeter. Definitely, I really like it. Definitely sweeter. Um, for Greg's palate, Greg hasn't done too well with the uh, pucker in the past few weeks. The mm -hmm. acid. It's not very woody or the dry. Yeah, well, okay, there's no wood in this one. Um, or at least not that I know of. Mm. But this is Bully Hill. This is Finger Lakes. Um, they, they're one of the biggest producers in the Finger Lakes. So if you have an opportunity to check out Bully Hill, uh, there's Do a it. lot of people in New York who love them. Do it. So, I mean... It's delicious. Well, definitely. Wine with hope. Mm. All right. Now so let's get to the Claire. Mm. That was good. I really enjoyed that. I am going to go my way. I got it. All right. That's good. Okay. And so as we can see, this is a 2009. Um, I actually believe the Bully Hill is non-vintage. Yeah, there's no vintage on the Bully Hill. But this is a 2009. Um, the way they make these, the two grapes in this are Merlot. You remember Merlot, right? Yeah. You remember Cabernet Sauvignon? Yeah. So what we do is instead of letting them sit on the skins, uh, they'll generally go one to three days on the skins, and then they'll get pulled off. And that's it. No more time on the skins, and then they begin the rest of the process for making wine. So, um, we kind of look at this. This has a nice... Uh, Almost kind of rusty color. Sure, yeah. A little bit orangey. Pink. Looks like a little bit of iron oxide. Sure. Yeah. It's an interesting looking rosé. So let's give it a smell. I mean, we haven't had one of these on before. What is this again? It's, it's a, oh, it's a Bordeaux Clary. That's yes. Good. Yep. I get... Strawberries and raisins. Really? What do you get? An old rubber tire. An old rubber tire. An old rubber tire. I mean, I could see dusty. A little earthy? No, maybe? Well, let's give it a taste. Hopefully it doesn't taste like an old rubber tire. If it tastes like an old rubber tire, uh... Uh-oh. <laughs> it has that red wine thing going on. Mm. Get an old rubber tire. Tastes like an old rubber tire. I'm getting a note in there, but I mainly taste... I taste like... I I taste some wood. Unripe strawberries and... Un, basically a whole bunch of unripe fruits. I get blackberries. See, I don't get blackberries. I, I like blackberries. I don't so if I got blackberries, I'd like it. I'm not a huge fan. I think there's better examples of um of rosé out there 
This really is a claret, and the clarets really have Hooray. fallen off. Basically, what that means is, and maybe I get some hay in there. This darker color that you can see here, this isn't really the the style necessarily. The style is closer to blush. <coughs> um, so we're talking about like white Zinfandel, if you're familiar at all with that. Um, you know that that's kind of where things have gone. So maybe we're gonna try another rosé at some point. But this one is um, this one's very old world. I can see where you might get some of that that note of hay. I feel like. This one, I'm sitting in the middle of a cornfield. Not a cornfield, a hayfield. I'm sitting in the middle of a farm. On a tractor. And there's a stack of old hay bales. And there's a tire fire. It's, it's not the freshest that it could be. You really want to drink these within a year. This one's gone on two. Um, but, I mean, it still has some fruit in it. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, it's actually... A fairly decent uh, wine if you're looking for a different style. Um, it has definitely a lot more of that Merlot Cabernet um, dry quality to it. It's very dry. Um, so that's what we've got time for this week. Um, so if you want to contact us, feel free to leave us comments down below on the YouTube. Comments. We got our first comments. In the yes, in yes. The last uh, one of our subscribers, <laughs> actually, <laughs> which <laughs> we're really happy about. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> um, and we're also going to be... Hopefully posting these beforehand now, too, so that people can actually uh, find out what we're drinking and try along with us. Um, but anyways, if you want to contact us, uh, send us a tweet. Send us a tweet, Elite, my favorite thing. Yeah, Greg loves his tweet, Elite. Um, and, or you can check us out. You can send us an email if you have something that you don't want the entire world to see. Send us an email, firstpourwine at gmail.com. I'll be sure to forward all those pictures along to Greg. Um, no one's even sent us anything yet. Well, that guy from Red Truck Wines did. That was very nice of him. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, um, or you can check out our website, firstpourwine.com, or brand new this week, you can actually check us out on Facebook. Yep, and the Facebook link you is can right like below. us. You can like us. You can poke us. You can... I don't actually know if they can poke us, but if you can poke us, uh, I'll direct all the pokes to Greg, and... Uh, you poke him in the eye. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. It's been great to have you. Until next week, um, we're going to be back with more uh, light varietals for spring and summer, and we'll see you next week. Have a good Booyaka week. Booyaka shot.